With the Supreme Court's separate but equal doctrine, established in 1896 with Plessy v. Ferguson, South Carolina moved toward the full adoption of legally imposed racial segregation. Although African Americans lacked any meaningful vote in the early 20th century, they did more than simply accept the marginal place whites attempted to assign them. Unable to challenge Jim Crow as a social system, they worked to improve their position within it. These efforts planted seeds of resistance that would come to fruition during the civil rights struggle. On the, on the lowest point in terms of race relations, in terms of, uh, of American history, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People did take some action uh, attempted to change things in South Carolina. Such seeds of activism would spring to life later in the 20th century. African Americans responded to Jim Crow and segregation and discrimination in three ways by accommodation, such as Booker T. Washington, by protest, such as uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, and finally by migrating, by leaving. Oh my sweet Carolina What compels me to go Oh my sweet disposition May you one day carry Both black and white South Carolinians served in World War I, though in segregated units. But South Carolina's economy suffered after the war. As in much of the South, the Great Depression began long before 1929. Let me tell you a story about a bold weevil. Now, some of you may not know, but a bold weevil is an insect, and he's found mostly where cotton grows. We gotta have a home. The price of cotton dropped 10 cents a pound. The farmer said to the bull weevil, Banks closed and textile mills laid off workers. And the bull weevils spread eastward from Texas and devastated crops. South Carolinians of both races faced a dark decade. We're American. And America's had a lot of hardships, but we're going to fight this through. Many things have happened, and I'm glad to say that the major part of them have greatly helped the well-being of the average citizen. Although cotton survived with New Deal price supports and production control, the major benefits went to the landowners. But for most African-American farms, sharecropping became the primary way of farming. Mister just set himself up as the new master of the plantation, and we were still as slaves. Road building and ditch digging, planting rice, planting corn, handling the livestock, attacking the horses, and uh, serving as maids. On the other hand, exactly the same age person, 93... Francina McCant said, Lee, you got to understand, it was wonderful. We had everything we needed. We had everything. And we didn't have nobody hanging over us. They also is allowed the culture to continue for good or for bad, you might say. Allowed the culture 
as well as the living conditions to continue. During this same era, South Carolina played a central role in one of the largest labor strikes in American history, as new management techniques in textile mills tried to increase production without increasing pay. The strikes would eventually lead to the passage of the National Labor Relations Act, which provided protection for organized labor. Despite its provisions, many strike leaders were blackballed and never rehired. Mill workers found a champion, though, in Olin Johnston, a former textile worker who ran for governor as a supporter of President Roosevelt's New Deal. As governor, he fought for better education and health care for the working class. Secretary of State Burns lands at Washington, just returned from the Paris Peace Conference. As South Carolinians like James Burns rose to positions of national prominence, it was only natural that the state would get its full share of federal spending during the Second World War. Although Roosevelt's New Deal had provided help and hope, the huge federal military spending in the state began turning South Carolina's economy around. When World War II ended, change and optimism were in the air, but the future in South Carolina was about to clash with the past.